19th meeting of the Corrine Township Zoning Commission will come to order. Could we please start with, join me with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is a roll call, please. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mrs. Smith? Here. Mr. Westfall? Here. Okay, next we need, we're going to, we have, we're going to administer the oath of office to three new commissioners, two commissioners and an alternate. Uh, would you like to do that, Scott? I'll go ahead. And okay. Can you stand for the mic? I'll go ahead and move your oath of office. I am Marky Farring. I am Marky Farring. Solemnly swear that I will uphold the Constitution. Solemn, solemnly swear that I will uphold the Constitution. And laws of the United States of America. And laws of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws. Of the state of Ohio. The Constitution and laws of the state of Ohio. And the laws and resolutions of Corey Township. And the laws and resolutions of Corey Township. And that to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Will faithfully discharge the duties of a member of the Zoning Commission. Will faithfully discharge the duties of a member of the Zoning Commission. In and for Corey Township. In and for Corey Township. Hamilton County, Hamilton. State, state of Ohio, so help me God. Hamilton County, State of Ohio, so help me God. Congratulations. And you go ahead and sign that oath. Um. Oh, Thank you so much. Come on, Dad. I, Richard I. Lauf, Richard I. Lauf. Solemnly, solemnly swear that I will uphold the Constitution. Solemnly swear I will uphold the Constitution. And laws of the United States of America. The laws of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the state of Ohio. And the laws and resolutions of Colbrain Township. And the laws and resolutions of Colbrain Township. And that's the best of my ability. And that's the best of my ability. Will faithfully discharge the duties. Will faithfully discharge the duties. As an, as an alternate member of the Zoning Commission in and for Coleraine Township, Hamilton County, State of Ohio, so help me God. Mr. Lau, I think you need to come up here. I don't think, I don't see, I don't see Mr. Grody. First of all, I'd like to welcome the, new, the two new, newest members of the board and say welcome aboard. Next on the agenda is the election of officers. Uh, we need to elect a new chairman and a new vice chairman. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to do that. I'll make a motion to do that. <laughs> Mark? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is there a second to that? I'll second I'm, that. I'm, <coughs> sorry. Scott and me. Scott and you. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we elect Mr. Taylor and Mr. Westfall as chairman and vice chairman of the 
board for the ensuing year. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the December 15th meeting. Is there any additions or corrections? Note so up there, the chair will entertain a motion to accept the December 15th All minutes as that. <laughs> written. <laughs> as written, okay, now. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the minutes of the December 15th meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, now it's a public address portion of this. I have Mr. Acton's name on the list. Do you want to talk now? Or do you want to talk it for one of the things that's uh, on the No, nothing on the agenda. I just okay, then. Miss McCount is supposed to be here, but she's not. So. Uh, <coughs> Jim Acton, Wood Trail, Corian Township, 40 year resident. I ask that Ma'am you, Mr. Lau, Mr. Westfall, and Scott, I don't know about you or about Mark, please do not cover up the microphone. We cannot review you on Waycross at home. Thank you. The I'm next. Sorry, I don't cover it up, but I well, don't. you, you got to lean forward there, Mr. Westfall, because if you listen to the replays, Ms. LeCount said the same thing at the trustee meeting when I approached her about this. If it wasn't for her notes, she wouldn't know what HEWL is going on. Okay. Thank you. That's amazing. You're the first person that's ever told me I didn't talk loud enough. <laughs> well, the last meeting, when you're leaning back like this, relaxing in your easy chair, it's hard to hear you. Okay. But thank I'll you, sir. i to do better. It thank may you. also have to do with the fact that the recording comes from, the, from these rather than... Right. Because the microphones over here work fine. It's just those mics up there that don't work. Um, and the other thing, Mr. Westfall, and I don't know if these people here can help me, uh, do we have a 2015 or 2016 Corain Township map available yet? That has to come from staff. Because the one we got right here is 2012. We do not have a, a new 2016 map that I'm aware of. What's the latest? That's something one? that you could take up with uh, Ms. LeCount. Is there a 2014 or 2015 or? Honestly, I'm not sure. You uh, need to you need got. to speak to yeah, Mrs. LeCount. Okay. Thank you. That makes uh, the meeting next week kind of hard for the residents. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Westfall. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda. Next on the agenda is a final development plan. There is none. The next item is a public hearing for case number ZA 2015-04. Text amendment to add language for alternative financial services providers. And this was continued from the August 18th Zoning Commission meeting. Staff, do you have anything for us? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a continuation of an item which I understand has been going on for quite some time. Uh, I came back to you in December. Um, this has also been referred to the Hamilton County Regional Planning and has come back to us with some recommendations. Those were reviewed in December and some modifications have been made, fairly minor modifications, uh, but I'll outline those. Uh, first of all, just for people uh, seeing this for the first time, this is dealing with a text amendment to the zoning resolution regarding alternative financing uh, service providers. Uh, the reason for this particular amendment is there's concerns in the community about detrimental effects of having too many of these types of establishments within the township. Um, this uh, Colerain is not alone in having this concern. There are other municipalities jurisdictions throughout Southwest Ohio who are also struggling uh, with the same issue. Uh, so don't feel like you're alone in this particular thing. 
Uh, concerns are generally surrounding high interest rates and the impact that has on household spending when they're spending a lot of money on interest and um, it, it straps people who are typically already in financial hardship. Um, the, the thing that people say is positive about these types of lenders are that they do provide credit for people who would typically not qualify for a standard bank loan. Uh, the downside, obviously, is that the terms of lending are much more expensive and are impacting people who can least afford that expense. Um, in the instance of title loans, which we're also uh, looking at, um, a lot of times the car is their only means of transportation to work. And if they're taking out loans that they can't afford on a car, it jeopardizes their transportation, their mode of getting to work and so forth. So there is a legitimate public concern for uh, establishing some reasonable uh, regulations regarding this. As you're aware, there's a moratorium that was established by the township trustees on any new establishments. Um, since the moratorium was put in place, we do have four applications of institutions that do want to come in. Um, the moratorium was set to expire at the end of this month because the trustees are not going to be able to take action until next month. I believe it was in December they voted to extend the moratorium. So that moratorium will still be in effect at the time they take action on your recommendation. Um, staff is recommending for approval of this, and I'll go through a, oops, a few items on this. Um, the language has been changed. It was originally only to uh, restrict providers to be in the B1 business zone. It has been expanded to the B2 business zone. This was a concern of Hamilton uh, County Planning that the uh, B1 was not a large enough geographic area to really get the dispersion that uh, we were looking for and also um, would actually further the concentration. Also restricting, uh, originally we said no more than one per 20,000 population in the township. Uh, that would have allowed for uh, two establishments, basically, in the township. Uh, the Regional Planning Commission thought that was too restrictive. Also, in looking at restrictions that other communities are um, implementing, probably more in the one per uh, 6,000 to 12,000 range seem to be a little more concentrated. So uh, I believe that was discussed at your December meeting that one per 10,000 would be more reasonable. Now what that would do for Colerain Township, it would allow up to five establishments. We already have um, 13 traditional and then a couple title loan hybrids. So, so about, we have 13, you've established that? Uh, uh, yes. I mean, I've been asking for that number since oh. August. Yeah, we did a, a survey of the township, and there are 13, and then there's... And four more waiting? Uh, yes. Um, and, and there's two that are um, sort of auto sale title loan hybrids that I think fall in this category. So um, there's up to 15 currently. What that does is it creates 8 to 10... Uh, non-conforming institutions and uh, in terms of implementation how this will work is that we basically capped the number of establishments uh, the only way a new establishment would be able to come in is if eight existing businesses basically went out of business and then open up more eligibility actually be nine would have to go out before the first eligible new establishment would be able to come in. And they would have to come into a location currently occupied by a similar business, correct? Uh, not necessarily. It would just have to meet the qualifications of the separation requirements. As a matter of fact, some of those are probably considered non-conforming 
existing because they're too closely um, together, well, spaced a together. Mile from where we're sitting, they're probably 300 feet apart. Or right. Feet apart. Right. Yeah. So if one of those goes out and the nonconformity basically goes away, the new establishment would have to follow under the new regulations. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that one would automatically open up in the same place. As a matter of fact, it may mean that they could not open up in the same location. Uh, keep in mind, we've got quite a few square miles in the township, and, um, but fairly a small amount of B1, B2 zoning uh, to accommodate five businesses. And I guess over many, and this may take many years to get down to five, because once a business is established, they're allowed to continue uh, under current regulations until they go out of business. Well, the evidence would be that you're never going to get down there. You've got 13, you got four waiting. Now tell me how you get to five. It's attrition. Uh, <laughs> Where's it, the attrition? That's we we can't legally force the attrition. I, I I know, but my point is, if I've got four lined, I've got thirteen, and I got four more lined up. Where's the attrition coming from? Well, the four are never going to be acted on. If, if this passes, it, you and you make the recommendation to the trustees, they pass it. Those four applications, the day that this new law becomes effective, we would basically deny all four applications. And they, they're they disposed the, with. Until the other businesses are gone down to the number of five? Right. Well, I guess they get below five. Then. Yeah. So until we get down to four, these new applicants, only one of them would be able to go in even at that plus the right. population exceeds 60,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, you could gain one. But not likely we would ever get there. So yeah. Not You're not basically well, my point is my point is the market's telling you there's a demand. If people want to come in and provide that service, they must believe there's a demand there. So tell me how with four people saying, I want to get in that business in this township, that suddenly I'm gonna have, you know, go from thirteen to five. I mean I just have a very hard time seeing that. I I agree with you. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily going to happen, and it won't happen overnight. Uh, businesses do come and go. But also keep in mind, as other communities start establishing regulations for this type of business, new businesses are going to open up in the areas of least resistance, and those will be the jurisdictions that have no regulations. So if we have no regulations, and everybody else around us is prohibiting new establishments, then Colerain would become a target, basically, for new businesses. And that may start changing the patterns. <clears throat> yeah. I, have a, I have a question. What, where are they presently located, the ones 13 through 15 that we had? Most of them are on Colerain Avenue. Uh, there's a couple on Galbraith. Um, uh, we have we have the addresses, um, but almost all of them are on Colerain. Colerain, 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 West Galbraith. Um, and we can get you a list of those. As a matter of fact, probably should provide that list to the uh, township trustees as well for their consideration. Uh, but I, I see the concern because I'm sort of new to the township. <laughs> That's one of the things I noticed driving down Colerain Avenue is that there does appear to be a significant concentration. And the four that want to come, are they also on Colerain? You know, I have not seen those applications. I, I don't know what the locations are. Um, this is kind of tough to say. It, the jurisdiction I'm coming from they tended to go into sort of the secondary commercial markets. Uh, they go for the older strip shopping right. centers, the older freestanding vacant buildings, um, and that most of that stock is on Colerain Avenue. So that would be my expectation. 
Um, yeah, that was the change. Uh, we have a um, provision that they must be located at least a thousand feet from any lot containing another similar establishment, 200 feet from any lot within a residential district. So those are further restrictions. Um, and we, I talked about the uh, regional planning. Uh, we did make another uh, recommendation for change in language. Uh, under check cashing businesses, we removed so long as the gas station does not conduct more than 100 transactions within a calendar month. Um, and actually, I don't have the reference for what page that is on. Uh, but there was a restriction on the gas stations. Uh, in talking about this with staff, we have no means of monitoring transactions of gas stations. And that was something that simply from an enforcement standpoint, uh, we had no means of enforcing. So we got to realize that's going to be just sort of a gap in this. Uh, by and large, I don't think that the large volume that you see in check cashing occurs at gas stations that charge exorbitant amounts. They want to do business. They want to sell gas. That's sort of the conclusion. Um, also, we exclude or added or a grocery store uh, for the money transfer business is just noting that many grocery stores offer that as a service. Uh, again, staff's recommendation is for approval as amended. Are there any questions before you open the hearing? Mrs. Smith, do you have any questions? Not at this time. Mr. Lyle? Not for staff. I mean, I, I'm pleased that at least we finally have some fact in front of us. I'm pleased that you knocked out two of the provisions that made absolutely no sense when we looked at it last time. Talk about my opinion on the whole matter, fullness of time. Mr. Taylor? No, no question. Mr. Ferry? No okay, so we're ready for a vote? No, we have oh, a yeah. Public hearing. Public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no names. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Westfall, excuse me. Come on, Jim. Oh, I have one question. If you're voting on this tonight, the trustees don't meet till February the 9th, and this moratorium goes off the end of the month. So how are you going to do all this? And that's why I'm I, I wasn't at the last board meeting, but I think Mr. Kohler said that the, the board extended the moratorium for another month. Yes. Okay, my mistake. Okay. That's, yes, yeah. I, yeah, okay. okay. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say? Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to close the public hearing part. Of so moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> does anybody on staff? Does anybody have any questions for staff concerning this? None appearing. The chair would entertain a motion that we vote for on on. Case ZA 2015 04, text amendment to add language for alternative financial providers. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. It's been moved. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept yes. the, te uh, the text amendment to add language for alternative financial providers, services providers. That's case ZA 2015 04. Can we have a roll call, please? Uh, we haven't had a discussion here. I thought we already had that. No, well, you asked if there was questions for staff. It's time in memorial. Let's go. You're up. One more time. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to state, say, state this as clearly as I can. I have not heard anything other than a bunch of subjunctives about. Well, some people say of this and that and the other thing, and some people think the interest rate's too high. That don't get the loan. I think my mortgage rate's too high. So, I have to, so what? Uh, you know, we have not heard any harm. We've heard a bunch of 
People think it's too high, it's a bad idea. On the other hand, a study that showed that states that allow these have lower bankruptcy rates than states that don't among the poor. I, you know, I mean, so I'm looking at this and say, it's a legitimate, I've got 13 people doing this business here. They must be finding a market. I got four more that think it's a good idea and want to get in the business. And, I, and we, rather arbitrarily, are saying six. That's half of what we got. It's a third of what we got if I count people lined up. That strikes me as fairly arbitrary. And I, and I have, you know, other than, I mean, the staff at least looked and said we have some evidence from the American planning that this is a, you know, a defensible number. I assume that means, you know, we feel like we could hold something up if somebody takes us to court. That's different than saying it's a, it's, it's a number that necessarily makes sense. So I, I, I mean, continue to have a problem with this one. I've said, go ahead and pull it. <laughs> Mrs. Smith. <laughs> Mrs. Smith. <laughs> I only want to point out one thing on page uh, 70. Uh, C. Should that be lost, lost, or lost? Yeah, there's a typo there. I don't yes. It, it should be lost. Lost. Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll make that correction. Mr. Taylor? So we're voting on this as, as presented by staff, correct? Correct. Uh, yes. Yes, what? <laughs> we're not voting yet. Oh, okay. I have no no comments. There is a motion on the. Yeah, there is a motion on the. Right. Okay. Well, we have one yes vote. <laughs> yes, Mr. Ferris. Second. Mr. Ferris. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Taylor seconded. Mr. Ferris. Yes. Mr. Ferris, do you have any comments you'd like to make before no. we vote? No comments. Okay. Can we have the roll call, please? <laughs> Mr. Faring? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Louth? Nay. Mr. Westfall? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, next on the agenda is an informal concept review to change the address of 7967 Wesselman Road from R3 Suburban Low <coughs> Residential to B3 Commerce. Staff, you have a presentation? Uh, I do not have a presentation on this. We do have an applicant representative of the applicant who would like to talk about rezoning a piece of property on uh, Westland Road. Mr. Abercrombie, are you the guy? I'm it. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tom Abercrombie. I'm with Abercrombie Associates, 3377 Compton Road. Cincinnati 45251. I, I represent uh, Randy Wayne. Uh, Randy's, these are two brothers by the way. Randy's on the left and Rusty's on the right. And I want to orient you to um, where you are. This is on Interstate 74, right before you get to Miami Town. Um, you'll see the red area there on the left is where Randy and Rusty both have their businesses. One is Wayne Paul Barnes and the other one's Wayne Demolition. And uh, they're both prominent good guys in this community. Uh, the property that we are looking at is to the right of that, and you can see the cross hatching coming through there. Part of it's in yellow and part of it's in blue. Uh, the different colors are the different zoning districts. Uh, the, and the colors match your zoning plats. The, the blue is the uh, riverfront district. Doesn't mean that that's water in there, by the way. It's just that that's the riverfront district. And I believe, um, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, what occurred here in the past was that all these properties were probably zoned some type of R3 residential, and they went southwardly. You can see how the parcels go across the expressway. So when I-74 was constructed, it isolated what's north of the expressway and everything over on that side now has been either B3 business or in the riverfront district, where the properties to the south of that, there's it's residential. The, the brown colored one down to the right is, um, I think it's called Country Squire, but it was, uh, there's just a little piece there that's still in Colerain Township before you go into Miami Township that Hillsinger developed into apartments. That's what 
the brown represents in that area. And that's the, that's in the PD something, a plan development residential district. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Wayne uh, has had this property for some time. We've been talking to Coleraine Township at least for two or three years wanting to present this for a zone change. And um, this area has a, flaw and some maps along the way that the flood line is, it is adopted by Hamilton County and adopted by FEMA were like a couple hundred feet different in some places. And we've been working with staff and trying to get this resolved. And um, you people about a year ago took care of that and you uh, changed that zoning line to match the 100 year flood line, if you remember doing that. So that is that's the difference between the yellow and the blue that you see on there. So the property out in front is not in the floodplain, the property in the back is in the floodplain. So um, we would like to rezone this to B3 to match the other ones in there in red. That's a B3 Commerce District. Anything under the B3 would be applicable here. And we would like to do this as a single letter zone district as Mr. Wayne has no plans for this property actually he wants to market the property and he's been trying to market it for five or six years and nobody is interested in it because it's so awkwardly zoned because we know that it's not a residential district anymore it's right along the highway and surrounded by um, floodplain and then b3 to the left so he wants to come in here and rezone this to a, a more compatible zoning and we feel it matching the B3 would be the appropriate zone. So that's it in a, in a nutshell. We have a couple staff items that we still have some concerns on that we're gonna work with staff. Uh, one being that um, whether we rezone the total parcel to B3 and let FEMA control what's in the floodplain or if we only rezone down to the floodplain and then you people would still be involved in that. We don't care either way. Um, and that's something we need to resolve yet. And the only other thing would be, um, this is a weird stretch of I-74. We've been dealing with properties here forever. But when the state took this property, they took it by easement. They didn't take it by deed. So all these stretches, you can see all those little parcel lines. Uh, actually, the one in front of us is actually owned by the apartment owner over here, Hilsinger. He actually owns that. He doesn't pay taxes on it, but in title, he still owns that and he has a permanent easement on it, so he has no use for it. Uh, and what we don't want to have happen here is that that being still zoned single family would affect our setbacks of anything that somebody wanted to develop in there. Uh, we haven't talked to Mr. Hilsinger, but I, uh, I know him and they both know him and feel like he'll probably sign an application to let us zone out to the middle because that's that's usually what you do. You always zone out to the middle so you don't have any gaps or gores. So we've got those two issues, uh, but this is just a preliminary. So we're bringing those up and we'll attack those uh, down the road. So just seeing if you guys had any comments or uh, ideas about it. You guys got anything you want to throw in there? <laughs> Mr. Farring, do you have any questions? Mr. Taylor? No, I think it's uh, I think it's a good idea. I Mr. Lau, land well, and there's not a whole lot else to do with it. So. Okay. Doesn't doesn't look like a residential place to me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mrs. Smith. Uh, yes. Well, you say he doesn't have any immediate plans, and he probably wants to market. Give me an example of what he would. Um, Market it as. What he would market as? Market the property as. as well, he wants to market it to something that's similar to the zoning that the uses are on this side of the expressway. It, right now it's residential, which means you have to build houses in there. Mm -hmm. And so anybody that would buy this property would have to come in and do what we're doing. So, and as the clients come to his real estate agent, they don't want to go through all those steps. And so we want to get it zoned more appropriately so that he can market it appropriately. Thank you. Know. you. 
I, I think it's a good idea to also, when I, I looked at it, I couldn't figure out why it was still all residential. <laughs> because that's... I think it was cut off by the expressway. Right, I think it cut it, yeah. I think it divided something in half, but it, that, that went through there a long time ago, so... Right. Well, see, even the Wayne's property, uh, the yellow that's to the south of that, they own those. Um, and they own the right-of-way that's in the street. Okay. And so they've been used to dealing with it. And that little piece on the back down the right-hand corner triangle is theirs, too. It has no road frontage and no way to get to it, but it's <laughs> there, you know. <laughs> okay, so what do, you, what do the members of the board think? They, they, are we all for it? Good. Mr. Lauf, Mrs. Yeah, Smith. I would be predisposed to do this. All right. I, I, I just want to give him good advice. This. Okay. Okay. Go Thank for you it. very much. And we'll try to make an application here in the next couple of weeks. And okay. We'll see you next month. Hope so. Thank uh, you. Two months. <laughs> okay. Is there any old, old business is next? Is there any old business? Is there any new? Well, there's new business. No. Could, could somebody introduce the new? Please. Um, I'd like to present our new senior planner on staff. His name is Marty Kohler, and he comes from the city of Middletown. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it here. We I do. So <laughs> new business. Is there any new business? Okay. Administration? Anything? Announcements? Any announcements? No, sir. Well, I guess maybe we should make the announcement. Several of us are going to be at the planning Friday, commission Friday. Uh, meeting on Friday. Friday is the outdoor uh, uh, conference. And I, there, I assume there are several of us that are going to be there. So I'll see some of you Friday. Yeah, yeah, barring seven inches of snow. <laughs> okay, uh, next on the agenda, the next meeting is the next meeting is February 16th, 20th. 2016. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So a second. I'll second that. We moved and seconded. We adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion. Adjourned.